Hello everyone, Musto0063 back once again, and despite the fact that we've only just finished Wily Tower, it's time to delve straight into Mega Man 4. Household robots Rock and Roll were created by master robot designer Dr. Light, and were enjoying their peaceful days. Then one day, the industrial robots all over the world went on a rampage, and the world fell into total chaos. Dr. Light quickly realised that mad scientist Dr. Wily was behind the nefarious deed, but he didn't know what to do. Rock, having a strong sense of justice, volunteered to be converted into a fighting robot. Thus, the super robot known as Mega Man was born. Mega Man shattered Dr. Wily's plans three times, and world peace has been maintained so far. But history repeats itself. <coughs> Wily Wars! <laughs> Dr. Cossack, a mysterious scientist, has invented eight powerful robots and sent them after Mega Man. Mega Man starts the battle again, this time equipped with the powerful new Mega Buster. But I'm not permitted to use. At least on perfect run attempts anyway. Yes, the fourth NES instalment introduces the ability to charge the Mega Buster. But even under normal circumstances, personally, I don't really rely on it or use it all that much just my personal style. And your ears are welcome. Here are our brand new 8 Robot Masters, and since, as always, I'm tackling Let's Play in perfect run order, I guess it won't be too much of a surprise who I'm going after first. Yep, it's everyone's favourite joke of a Robot Master, Toad Man. But let me tell you, I do a dreadful job getting through the stage this time. Invariably what happens when you switch the recording on, isn't it? The first thing to mention is that the rain you can see actually pushes Mega Man backwards when he jumps, but when he walks on the floor it has no effect. We're immediately ambushed by swallows dropping baby swallows, and all bird type enemies need to flutter off and never come back. Every single one is annoying in its own way, and indirectly in the way there. I was trying to slide out of the way of the birds and slid straight into the umbrella firing enemy. But those by the way float down from the sky and when they reach the ground they'll throw the umbrella at you. If they were trying to help prevent Mega Man from rusting, what with all this rain, then I'd thank them. But they're not, so screw them. And screw the birds too. Well that does at least bring us to the end of the rain section, and presumably into an underground sewer. And we are greeted by some rat enemies. Well, it is a sewer after all. Affectionately known as Rattle. They'll hop along the floor, but they're very slow moving, and you should easily have enough time to take them out. There are some ceiling enemies that when you get sufficiently close to them, they'll drop down, but again, they're very slow moving, and provided you can spot them, or indeed having played the game before, just don't forget they're there, then they won't, shouldn't pose any difficulties. So, coming up is the first of two, yes, two, mini-bosses. Eskaru, or giant snail to you and me. Its weak spot is its eyes, but they don't always remain open, so you only have a limited window of attack. He'll either throw a bomb at you, or detach his eyes and send them hurting in your direction. Personally, for this first one, I position yourself in the left corner. If he throws a bomb, slide to the right out of the way, and slide back to the left once it's exploded. If you detach his eyes, jump over them, slide to the right, and slide back to the left once they return to their sockets. And there is barely any respite before we're immediately chucked into a fight with the second Eskaru. And this one is made much more difficult due to the gushing water, which acts like a current and pushes Mega Man sideways. But with there being a pit either side of the platform you're standing on, you're constantly fighting the water as well as a giant snail. Now I'll accept the first hit there, that was a screw up, but you can get stuck with that so-called second hit. In terms of a dodging strategy, I'd actually recommend the same one as for the first Eskaru, just try to do a better job than I managed. Lastly, the fish type submarine looking enemies jump out of the water when they reach Mega Man. You can obviously either shoot them, one hits all it takes, but if you're clever for certain ones, you can just let them harness a jump over you. And when I say clever, I mean when you mess up your shots and miss them completely. 
There were spikes on the floor in case you missed them, so watch your jumps, and certainly don't go as far as to avoid running into a fish submarine at the expense of landing on safe ground. That brings us to Toad Man, and for all the trouble the stage has gave me, hopefully none of you thinking that Robot Master was going to give me any. This, as I'm sure you all must know, is one of the most laughably easy Robot Masters to defeat, because provided you keep attacking him, he never actually does anything other than hop over you. For such a pathetic boss, he does amazingly have a completely undodgeable attack, if you ever allow him to pull it off, and I don't believe you can say that about any other classic Mega Man Robot Master. When he wiggles from side to side performing some sort of rain dance, his rain flush attack will appear on screen, and it is an instant hit. You cannot avoid it. Now, assuming you keep hitting him, the one thing to watch out for is the fake out where he doesn't actually jump. Assuming that he will and preempting it by sliding can leave you with toad on your face. So wait until you see him jump, then slide under him and out of the way. Remember that, and Toad Man should never, ever, 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 ever cause you any embarrassment. There was our new weapon get animation sequence and our new weapon get notification screen. For defeating Toad Man, I acquire Rain Flush, which works the same way I describe Toad's actual attack, should he ever perform it. Rain lashes down and kills most enemies on the screen at that time. We also get Rush Marine, and while I wouldn't say it's all that amazing or anything, it is nice to attain a Rush upgrade for beating such an easy robot. I'm omitting the word Master, he doesn't deserve that title. So despite my appalling efforts on the level part of the stage, a perfect run shouldn't ever have been in doubt, should it? definitely shouldn't have been. I actually showed off Toad Man's stage in black and white during my Mega Man Perfect Run introduction video. And yes, obviously we're now, unfortunately, or not depending on your viewpoint, back to black and white. Now Wily Wars was something of a special case because less people are aware of the game, and I had a few stories I wanted to tell, but I don't really have much extra to say in terms of Mega Man 4, at least not yet anyway. So these Perfect Runs are going to return to the formula of me shutting up considerably more and only piping up when I reach what was a trouble spot in the game as at this time I've talked about the stage and dodging strategies etc in the let's play. So I should have piped up there to say that it was indeed the first screen that gave me the most trouble. Three mess ups on it. The successful clearing of the screen I showed off there felt somewhat speedy in places or at least lots of sliding in order to get through it as quickly as possible and well I'd advocate that as being the best strategy. When I hung around the birds tended to hit me but when I rushed the timing seemed to work out rather nicely. This opening sewer section was absolutely no problem, as long as you're careful not to get disorientated thanks to the gushing water pushing you sideways, then as described previously, all the enemies here are slow moving and don't fire any projectiles or anything, and that makes them rather impotent. The first, emphasis on first, giant snail wasn't an issue. Without the water to worry about, the dodging strategy of setting up camp on the left hand side of the screen affords you the most time to react to whichever attack comes your way. The second, emphasis on second, giant snail was. My sliding strategy is not so straightforward here because you end up travelling a greater distance than normal and having to sort of reset yourself, usually by jumping, can throw your timing off. As you may have just seen there, since I'm not right over in the corner this time, the eyes might detach at a slightly different angle and automatically sliding is therefore not always going to be a good idea. Gloriously, there were no screw-ups on the fish submarine section. Familiarise yourself with when and at what angle they jump out of the water, and this will help you get by the ones that you don't have time or a little more awkward to shoot. Anyone expects me to report any failure on Toad Man is going to be sorely disappointed. I said all I wanted to say about the fight during the Let's Play, so sit back and enjoy the boss music.
Now I should point out that unlike Mega Man's 2 and 3, this time you aren't frozen in place once you beat the boss. So there's a mini celebration at clearing the stage. The celebration will be less muted the further I progress. Before I get into the difficulty analysis, I've got to briefly allude to the music that played during the transition from Let's Play to Perfect Run. If you watched my earlier videos, you'll know that I played Wily Wars versions of the Robot Master Sages 16-bit during the transitions. But obviously, I can't do that for Mega Man 4 and beyond, so I have been wondering what to play from now on. I've put a reference to what the music cue was in the description, and I would strongly encourage you to go check out the full version and indeed the other 16-bit style remixes by Mixer Productions. Now, as much as I joked about Toman himself being a pushover, and that I clearly decided to tackle him first, I wouldn't describe the stage overall as a pushover. Don't get me wrong, it's still pretty easy, provided you're concentrating, but certainly not the easiest in Mega Man history. Generally, I attempted stages in order based on how difficult I perceived the boss was going to be, but that certainly wasn't always the case. Ringman is an especially good example of that in Mega Man 4, but I'm getting way ahead of myself. Like I said, still pretty easy, and it only took me 10 minutes to get the successful run. Five outtakes, none on Toadman. Three were on the first screen with the rain, the swallows, and the umbrella enemies, and two on the second giant snail. It's the swallows that are the main irritants in that first screen, and the baby ones more so than the mother ones. I would advise upon dodging them rather than killing them. You often don't quite have enough time to be able to take out all three baby swallows before one will be right upon you. If you wait on the ground and simply jump or slide out of the way when they all home in on you, you'll probably have a more pleasant experience. The umbrella enemies aren't really themselves an issue, it's more than being in the way when you're trying to avoid the birds. But you still need to pay attention to them, and if you can't slide past them, don't be slow taking them out, as the umbrellas do get thrown at you at a fair pace. The gushing water is what throws the timing out of the whack when fighting the second snail, but the idea of staying as far left as you can, without falling in the pit, seems sensible, as it will give you the most time to react to any of the snail's attacks. And of the two, it's the detaching eyes that is more likely to catch you off guard. Toadman barely even warrants a mention. He's there, and that's all that that about needs to be said. This was a nice gentle introduction into Mega Man 4, and as such, I was still in a very happy mood after having emerged victorious. The 1 out of 10 club acquires its fifth member. Let's all give Toadman a warm welcome. In all honesty, the stage could pose sufficient problems to warrant a slightly higher rating, a little like in the case of Snake Man, but in terms of my experience, I didn't suffer enough failure to be able to warrant such a score. So, 1 out of 10 it is. That's me up and running with Mega Man 4, but just barely, given that I started what I thought would be one of the easiest stages. Maybe next time we'll really be able to dive into the game. Hope to see you then. Cheerio.